Hey, what's up? I'm Dustin, and today I'm going to be doing our evenly matched review of Aqua Kitty, Milk Mine Defender. I'm sure there are many people out there who still remember the old game Defender. It was released into arcades in the 80s and tasked the player with controlling a ship to defend humans from being captured by aliens, thus the name Defender. What made Defender unique was it featured a mini-map at the top of the screen, so even though you couldn't be everywhere at once, you could see what was happening and plan accordingly. Aqua Kitty, Milk Mine Defender, not only shares the title of the 80s arcade game, but also these basic gameplay ideas. But instead of defending humans from being abducted by aliens, you're a cat. Piloting a submarine, defending underwater minor kitties from being abducted by robotic octopi. Because why not? Visually, Aqua Kitty is gorgeous. The game places heavy emphasis on retro SNES style pixel art and pulls it off meticulously. Every aspect of the game is pixelated to perfection, from the cargo ship on the ocean surface to the enemies and fish swimming in the sea, and down to the rays of light filtering into the backdrops. The visuals may not raise the bar for what a fully pixelated retro game should look like, but it does everything so well, you really can't complain. Menus are bright and colorful, with easy to read fonts and selections, and characters in the playing field stand out so they won't get lost in the background. In a game where it's important to know what's shooting at you and what's safe, distinction between objects is key, and Aqua Kitty succeeds here. In sticking with the retro vibe, Aqua Kitty features songs reminiscent of the 16-bit glory days. These tracks are vibrant, absolutely fitting to the theme of the game. The songs start out happy and carefree in the early, easier stages, but take on an action-style tone in the more challenging areas. You hear the same songs featured again and again, but luckily, they're so fantastic you'll probably get them stuck in your head rather than be annoyed by them. Sound effects all work as they should, with shots from your ship making satisfying impacts when they collide with the robotic sea creatures. Explosions sound great, and the menu bips and bops remind me of games on the SNES, which I love. The only area where I'd say the sound effects suffer is when your submarine takes damage. The impact noise is usually not prevalent enough to know you got hit, and if you're not watching your ship directly, you may not even notice the damage you suffered. Controls on Aqua Kitty are another of its defining features. The game aims at simplicity, needing only three buttons and directional controls to get the job done. The game offers seamless controller support, but you can also use the keyboard if you like. You move your aquatic cat vehicle with the directional controls, while your other three buttons are assigned to turning the ship around, firing your regular weapon, and firing your special weapon. Turning your ship is key. You move faster going forward, but being able to shoot while moving backwards helps you avoid taking damage, so you need to manage which direction you're aiming in each given moment. The best part is it only takes a round or two to grasp this concept, and from then on it feels completely natural. Beginning enemies are easily taken down with your ship's regular firepower, but later on, tougher enemies require far more damage to be destroyed. You can take them out easier with your alternate special weapon, which fires a much more damaging blast, but ammo for this weapon is limited. It refills slowly, and beating each new area grants you even greater carrying capacity for it, but even at the maximum amount, it's still something you'll want to conserve for the enemies that require it. Progression through each area is pretty standard. Things start out slow and simple, but quickly build up in difficulty. The game likes to constantly introduce new types of robotic enemies to throw at you, and each one is unique in its own way. Some explode when damaged, catching other baddies in the blast, while others move quickly and try to dodge your bullets. These new enemies help keep the game feeling fresh and varied, even though the main objective to protect your milk mining cats always remains the same. Without this, Aqua Kitty's waters might have grown stagnant and stale. Luckily, this isn't the case. Still, the game isn't without its flaws, as later enemies become a real annoyance to deal with, whether it's because of their quick movements, high damage capacity, or both. Even playing on normal difficulty, the ending stages become a swarm of enemies and bullets to avoid, making these areas a certified challenge. You'll most likely have to retry the same stage over and over again. For some people, that can be a good thing. For others, it can be frustrating. Whether this is a positive or negative aspect of gaming depends entirely upon how difficult you like your games to be. Multiplayer is a hit or miss in Aqua Kitty. While it's fun to have another person helping you out with each mission, both players are tied to each other to a degree. Mobility is limited to a single screen, meaning in order for the players to move to another area of the stage, they both have to go there at the same time. This tethering feels like a ball and chain tied around your ankle when compared to the single player mode, and while the extra firepower from your buddy helps, it doesn't feel like the preferred method to advance through the game. As for the story, Aqua Kitties is next to none. The milk is run dry, and the kitties of the world seek out a new source to quench their thirst. Apparently that source is naturally forming deposits of milk deep in the ocean. And that's about it. But let's be honest here. 
This game, much like classic arcade games of the 80s, isn't based around its storyline. You won't be playing the game to find out how the cats succeed and prosper. You'll be playing to shoot dozens of enemies on screen and keep your miners protected in the hectic battlefield. The story is merely there to give the game some reason to exist. At least it's entertaining and cute. If you're looking for a challenging Defender-style clone that often borders on a bullet hell shooter, Aqua Kitty is exactly what you need. If you're just wanting a cute shoot 'em up underwater with cats and submarines, but without as much challenge, the game also has an easy mode to help ease you into it. We give Aqua Kitty Milk Mine Defender an evenly matched silver medal. It's an amazing game for retro game enthusiasts or anyone looking for a fun yet challenging venture into the shoot 'em up genre. The graphics and gameplay are superb, and the music is so good you'll probably want to purchase the soundtrack. The only minor complaints I had about the game were the lack of impact from when your sub takes damage the tethered multiplayer mode, and the repetitious gameplay. You know what you're getting into with a game like this, but that doesn't mean it'll hold your attention indefinitely. Still, it's fun while it lasts, and for the low price tag, totally worth the investment. If you liked this review and would enjoy seeing more in the future, please subscribe to our channel. Also, you can follow us on Twitter and Twitch, or email any suggestions you have to evenlymatchedvids at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.